Hey guys, what's up? This is the Electricians in Action, where we get together and we talk about the code every morning before we go out and fight the good fight. You can catch the EIA every day at 9 a.m. Let's get to it. All right, so let's take a look at how much should I charge for a panel change. Now, there are a lot of different scenarios and a lot of different could be's and should be's when it comes to panel changes, but we're going to talk about some of the really basic ones, and then every scenario is going to be a little bit different. We're also going to talk about tactics for how to charge for the panel change. So let's go through the three major scenarios. So the first one is doing the panel only. Sometimes we run into a case where we can literally do the panel only. So we can literally go in, the outside doesn't need touch we're good we're literally just replacing the panel that's in front of us so you've got to figure out how you want to charge do you want to charge based off you know how many hours in your mind you might think it takes and then calculate in your company what you got to make an hour to meet overhead and what you'd like to make and what profit needs to be and you can total up those hours and charge like that another way to do it is just to figure out how much you need to make for a day I mean does your company need to make 500 700 1100 twelve hundred dollars fifteen hundred dollars in a day for the amount of men that you have on the job and you can calculate it that way as well you can figure out a flat rate price per panel um, you know or flat rate price based on how many breakers they have inside the panel so there's a min uh, you know million different ways that you can do it but there's going to be a tipping point isn't there there's going to be a point where you can only charge so much for this job because there's a market value that's what I love about capitalism is that and I'm not talking about crony capitalism or none of these things that wasn't a political statement I'm talking about the open and free market right so there's 50 electricians every one of them can legally charge whatever they want and we're going to have to compete compete against each other a little bit but once you start to build your reputation competition starts to become less and less of effect and more it starts to become of what's fair you know I want to be able to go to bed and lay my head down at night and not feel like I robbed somebody so I do charge a very hard high price but I also like to think that I uh, do one of the, the highest performances as far as customer service you know communication and all of these different things so you got to decide what kind of electrician you want to be do you want to be busy all the time because you're the cheapest in town or do you want to charge a little bit more and be one of the best so that's something that you've got to decide for yourself so let's say we're doing this panel only and I feel like it's going to take me most of the day if you've ever done a panel change in the past you know that it takes pretty much a whole day doesn't it no matter even if you get it done by one you're waiting on the inspector or waiting on the power company or driving the ground rods or something it seems like there's always it's just always got a day tied up in it and even if you do get done at one and everything comes together and the power comes back on you still had to go pull the permit you still had to go get all material so you've got about a day wrapped up in it so let's say you say that your company needs to make about seven hundred and fifty dollars a day labor so what you could do, one way that you could sell this to the customer is you go in and say, hey, that will be 750 plus parts. And I really encourage you to, um, especially on panel changes, charge plus parts. And I'm going to talk about two different ways to, to bid these jobs. So the reason I do plus parts on a panel change is because anytime there's a whoopsie part that you either forgot or it gets broken, especially if you're having to deal with some of the old components, you know, like the old fittings and different things, it can get very expensive. So if you forgot a 100 amp breaker, depending on what brand, that might be a $90 breaker. If you forgot uh, that you have to add bus bars to the panel you bought or whatever, so your whoopsie on a panel change can be a lot more expensive. So one of the reasons I like to do it that way is because I can charge a flat rate labor price I know what I have to have for that day let's say it's 750 you might charge 950 or 1100 I charge all of those different prices depending on the scenario so let's say you charge 750 plus parts you ended up having four hundred dollars in parts you may or may not choose to mark those parts up and the customer got their panel chains for eleven to fifteen hundred dollars approximately right depending on how many breakers they had and if they wanted to upgrade to a few arc fault or ground fault breakers or have you do some more work so and, you know, let's look at a couple things that might change the cost of that price. Sometimes I charge more just because it's difficult. If I am in a living room, a finished living room, and it does happen, and I have a panel, boy, I can't, you know, I have to be very careful with how that looks when I get done. But if I'm in a garage and it's surface mount, there really is no consideration for that type thing. I can, it's surface mount, I'm not having to deal with the, you know, the drywall in and out the wall. So I might have two different panels with one surface mount and one's recessed in the wall, and I charge a couple of, you know a couple hundred more dollars on the other one just because of what I have to deal with on the one where it's a finished space I might buy sometimes I'll buy a piece of trim that goes around it you know uh, and I could teach you about that in the future so I'm gonna add money in for all of these different labor situations you know one of the other factors that I have on panel changes is somebody living there sometimes you really get to do a panel change and nobody's living there it's one of the greatest things ever right because you know if, depending on if it's not cold weather at the time you can turn the power off for a day 
Nobody's living there. Come that evening, pull the panel out. Come the next evening, put the channel change, you know, put it back together. And it takes all the pressure of having the power off and the inspector scheduled for that day. So with that being said, let's move on to another scenario. So let's say you're doing an inside and outside. You're upgrading the meter either to a new meter or a meter disconnect combo and the panel. So you're going to be looking at still a day's work, but you may have to have more labor on site. You may have to have another man or you just may have to work harder. So you may decide that, hey, I'm going to count that as about a day and a half of labor. So let's say you did the 750 scenario and you end up around 1100 and you say 1100 plus parts. Or if you want to do turnkey jobs, that's OK, too. Just make sure that you really take more time during the estimate. OK, counting the breakers, counting the fittings, making sure that your stub is going to be good when you go through the back to back. Do I have to replace the riser right now? A stick of rigid metal conduit in our area. Last time I checked, it was one hundred and sixty dollars up from one hundred and ten. And it may be close to two or two fifty right now if you can even get a stick. So if I'm having to redo the riser, which we're going to talk about in a minute, I've got to factor that in. Do I need a rigid nipple? All of these things now, because of the you know COVID market that we're in, the prices are through the roof. So one fitting could cost you $80. So if you do do a flat rate price, which I do sometimes do, just make sure that you've calculated it and add yourself in a 10 to 20% kind of buffer zone. So if I calculated the material at 400, I might take it and multiply it by 0 0.20 and add that to my estimate, right? And just make sure you got yourself a little buffer zone. And if, you know, worse come to worse and everything went perfect and you felt like it you could always give your customer a refund i find that it's always easier to give them money back than it is to try to ask to get money from them because even if they give you the money it's about reputation isn't it it's not just about the money we can make the money but if they have that bad taste in their mouth if they leave a bad review if they don't give you their aunt's phone number to change her panel so you've got to think about the opportunity cost for everything sometimes i'll just fix stuff and just not even charge for that little piece that i forgot because it's just not worth my reputation now let's talk about the third scenario here. And we're talking about cost and, and how much you should charge, but I don't want to just tell you prices because I've made other videos really talking about the prices. I'm really talking more about the... Um, I'm trying to teach you how to price jobs and the, the models and the methods that you can use and the thought process that you're using when you are estimating these jobs because not every job is cookie cutter. You could be like, well, the coach told me to charge 950 plus parts and you know it took us a day and a half. Well, every job is going to be different. So I'm trying to teach you a process where you slow down and you protect yourself. So, you know, just take all these things in, soak them in and use them with what you already know to move forward. Remember, don't be a follower, be a student. Take a little bit of what I say, a little bit of what you've learned, a little bit of what others say, and you can compile it together to where you can be better than, than all of us. You know, if you take all of our advice, you know, ultimately you can be better and better. Let's talk about the third scenario here. So we're dealing with a setup where we're doing a full service change. Now, many times this happens because the HVAC guys come in and there's a fuse box in there and they got a hundred amp service and old fuse box. And, you know, uh, they're not going to put that HVAC in until that panel gets upgraded. And we say, yes, that sounds great. I would love to come give you a service upgrade. Now, this is going to be from top to bottom. Typically, sometimes you can reuse the pipe, but if I'm upgrading from a hundred to a 200, there's a good chance it's a total wash and I'm having to rebuild everything. And on these ones, you have to be very diligent because you are responsible from the top of that weatherhead all the way inside, depending on how your area's power company establishes responsibility. But in our area, the customer owns from the weatherhead in. They just don't own the glass meter itself, but they own the meter socket. They own the grounding electrode system. They own everything in between. That means they're financially responsible for it. So if you're quoting this job, that means you're financially responsible for it too, right? So here's the deal. So we're doing a full service change, and this is when it gets a little bit more expensive. I might have a couple days in it in preparing, prepping, getting everything in line because it's a larger job, isn't it? I might have to have three to four men on site. Now, I've done them with two men hundreds of times. It's just very challenging, and I'm going to charge for that challenge. So let's say we calculated at two, you know, at two days labor. Even if it doesn't take you a full two days, you're calculating it at the strength, the manpower, or the mental capacity that you're having to use uh, for two days. So let's say I charge fifteen hundred dollars plus parts. That's going to give your customer, depending on the price of parts at the time, a project that ends up around you know twenty two hundred to twenty five hundred dollars. We do inside and outside, you know, with the whole service change in between eighteen hundred and thirty five hundred, depending on the scenario. So these are not hard and fast numbers but I really just want to give you a process. So let's recap just so we can get it all together. No matter what you're doing, decide how much you're 
you're going to charge and at what model you're going to use. Are you going to use labor plus parts or are you going to use a turnkey estimate? If you do do a turnkey estimate, make sure you give yourself some margin for error and be ultra diligent in calculating your parts. Okay. If you do 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 do, if you do use the labor plus parts method, often your customer is going to say, well, how much are parts going to cost? You have to be prepared to kind of make a quick mental math then. Well, you're going to have about 200 in your panel. You're going to probably have another couple hundred in breakers. I tell people, and then I give them a large range, don't I? So let's say I told them 750, uh, which I charge much more than this, but let's say for you know uh, simplicity that I told them $750 labor plus parts. And I could say, well, you're going to have in between three and $800 in parts, depending on your scenario. So that means you would have in between 1100 and 1500 and typically guys after you do this over and over You're gonna find that they always fall in that same pocket a panel only falls in between 11 and 1600 a Inside outside falls in between 1600 and 2000 and a full service change falls in between 1800 and you know 3500 depending on you know it could be outrageous and you're outrageously far So they always end up falling in this same pocket every single time I have personally done you know approximately five 500 panel changes and you know so I've, I've got tons and tons and tons of experience doing panel changes and they all fall in that same pocket it's all the same scenario so no matter how you're charging just make sure that you do your diligence you get in there and get excited with the customer remember let them know that this is the heart of the home this is you know this is going to make everything safer and really it is one of the greatest things that you can do for a customer is change their electrical panel and provide a top-notch job and you can use all of the videos on this channel to help serve you in order to you know to, to produce that top-notch job i have videos of whole panel changes i have all these different things in between this channel and the electrical diy channel i hope you guys have a great day i hope that this added a little bit of value to you my bargain is is that you might share this with somebody i hope that it encouraged you you can do anything that you want to do that you put your mind to as long as it's legal moral and ethical decide if you want it and go get it i'm the electrical code coach let's go ahead and get to it hey guys that's it for today but i just want to take a minute and remind you that this is the greatest time in history to be an electrician i will help you every step of the way become a licensed electrician break the chains change the legacy become everything that you were meant to be in life and in the electrical industry, you can email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. You can do this. Whew, let's get to it.